to go around. Okay. Alright, let's get the dynamics then. Welcome. Sorry, everyone. Oh, no. Now we feel guilty. Now. Only Judy can make me feel guilty about the mock standing up. <laughs> the, uh, alright, guys. A couple things. Uh, uh, first off, uh, this is uh, a very cool because I just talked to Mike about it. This is actually a show's 100th episode. Holy you guys know that? Yes. Very weird to. Uh, very weird. Very weird. We did 100 of these bad things. I know, man. Very weird to think about it, you know? Um, and as always, we like to give the 100th script to Beagle. Kevin Beagle is first <laughs> But uh, 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 on a on a cheesy level, I, yeah, I, I gotta say, I've, uh, I could not be more surprised or more proud to be actually ended up doing this many episodes of uh, of the show, and I, I never would have guessed or thought it to be so possible from uh, when we started. It is a really cool thing to think about. They'll, uh, uh, they'll 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 make a big deal about it next week, and there'll be a bunch of uh, thanks. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what a> <laughs> We're gonna talk afterwards about whether that joke was good enough to do. But you know, so they'll make a big deal. There'll be a lot of hoopla about it, and it'll, I'm sure it'll seem cheesy because it'll be publicity oriented. But uh, uh, pat yourselves on the back because it really is an accomplishment, and very few actors or writers can say that they uh, they ever got to do that, especially considering you know the, the television landscape today. So I think it's really neat. Will Kevin Riley be coming by with champagne? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, beyond that, uh, I would like to, uh, you guys have already said hello, but I'd like to welcome Michael again. One of the things, so you guys know, one of the things we haven't done on the show before is had a patient that was here for a long period of time that everybody on the show will end up having moments with and scenes with and connect with. And uh, she's going to be with us for a couple months. I think she's with us for seven or eight episodes. So, oh, great. Uh, it's a kind of a really neat arc, and everybody, everybody, everybody here will, uh, you know, have little moments with uh, with her, and then we'll kill her. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, but uh, uh, I couldn't be uh, couldn't be uh, happier to have you around. And I told you on the phone, I'm a sick fan here. Uh, it's neat to be working with you. Um, beyond that, I am going to, Zach has shamed me next week into uh, having a shot list and, uh, <laughs> and after a week like this, trying to go as quick as I can, there's a ton of effects and a, a ton of stunts in this, but we'll do the best we can, but let's, uh, let's read it, it's really good. So, number 100, alright, my misperception. Here we go. Starting in the cold open, we start in the street. JD is riding <clears throat> on the street. Since my scooter was in the shop, I didn't know how I was going to get to work today, but luckily my neighbor Ronald let me his ride. We pull back to reveal JD on that super tiny red Razor scooter. <laughs> Ronald's <six>. sick. <laughs> but I still got here in time to steal the security guard's arts and leisure section. He yanks the paper out of the security guard's hand. Around here, everyone has some kind of morning ritual. We go to a patient's room that morning. Elliot's holding a newspaper sitting next to a patient who's in bed. Whether it's getting help on the daily word jumble from your dyslexic tracheotomy patient. T-T-P-I-P-O-E. Elliot covers her tracheotomy hole. She says, hush, bye bye. Save your voice, Marshall. <laughs> 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 the, camera, the camera rises through the ceiling to the next floor to reveal Dr. Kelso in the gym going in an order. A healthy tongue lashing? You better find it, because physical therapy tongues don't just disappear. The camera rises through the ceiling again as the voiceover bridges the cut. Or for some, just a healthy soap. It rises to the roof where the janitor sits in that physical therapy tub. <laughs> Todd scrubs around his ankles as sporting his banana hammock. Oh, come on, how is this not a swimsuit? <laughs> the janitor touches the side of the tub and says, no banana hammocks. If you get anywhere near this tub, I'm going to give you a four-story atomic wedge. <laughs> the janitor's watch beeps. He stands up, takes out a tiny mirror, and angles it to catch the sunlight. Just as we cut to the parking lot, J.D. is driving up on his tiny scooter. The blinding white flash hits his eyes. My eyes! As J.D. drives directly into the bushes. <laughs> we cut to the nurse's station. A little later, a nurse bandages J.D.'s arm, and several other nurses look on. Yeah, it hurt. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> When you accept the keys to the hog, you become a lifetime member of the danger. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. He picks up his scooter with one hand. I've got lives to save. <laughs> he walks over to Elliot and drops the scooter in the trash. I'll give Ronald a lollipop or something. <laughs> Sex life. Ah, uh, yes, that feels good. <laughs> As the 
because that's as good as it gets for me, guys. That is three parts at once. Thank you. So we go to the back to the patient's room, continuous, J.D. and Elliot Anner. And since there's no way to truly gauge how much pain someone's in, we have to rely on an archaic chart. Now it looks at the pain chart. There's a, these are real. It's very, uh, very wide. A series of cartoon faces in progressively worse states of agony. Each face is marked with a number of 1 to 10, 10 being the most painful. Miss <laughs> yep, you're a 7. <laughs> What's a 10? Just then, outside the window, Tom drops down. Poor story of Tom and As Todd screams in pain. <laughs> He holds up a chart. Why did you order a, BM, a BMP test on my patient, Mrs. Wilk, last night? Because she's my patient. She yeah, interesting. Seems as I admitted her yesterday afternoon. And I treated her last night. <clears throat> Dr. Dory, why do I hate Because they're taking all of our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> He throws back to Dr. Cox. Look, we spent an equal... <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, 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 I did not think I was going to win. Look, I'm shaking. <laughs> I can only assume you're his mother. He played hearts with me all night. I wanted to play poker, but he doesn't know. I refuse to learn. That's how my grandfather lost his pet shop. Dr. Cox exits frustrated. Jake turns to Mrs. Wilk. He didn't really lose the shop gambling. The government took it away to do. Uh, the government took it away due to illegal crossbreeding. Grandma left him, but his Siamese ogre ferret never. <laughs> <laughs> so go to the patient's room. Continues. Elliot is with Mr. Peel and Mrs. Peel. Oh, Mr. Peel, I've run every. Feels like someone's sticking a knife in my back. Yeah, pain is funny. Mrs. Peel gives her a look. <laughs> well, not funny. More weird. We always had a guy who thought his head was on fire. We called him Old Fire Hand. <laughs> Where are you, turning? <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong with it? Oh, I don't think we ever figured it out. He's a funny guy, though, Fire Hand. <laughs> he did the best impression. What? Mostly of a guy on fire. <laughs> <laughs> lupus. Fire Hand had lupus. <laughs> oh, Turk's entrance one super fast sentence. Oh, thank God he's here. This is the new doctor. It was nice meeting you. Bye. Help has arrived. So he exits as Turk studies Mr. Peel's chart. And then Turk said what every surgeon says when he's not sure what to do. Mind if I slice you open? <laughs> <laughs> need to know by a show of hands if any of you aren't going to be able to make it. Everybody's hands shoot up simultaneously. Come on, aren't you guys embarrassed by our last three staff pictures? We show the last three staff pictures, each with a ridiculously sparse turnout, Carl and Nurse Roberts, and Todd in his car. <laughs> Todd then holds up his stretched out thumb. And Jan never ruined my picture thumb. <laughs> Look, Brian, I'm gonna need a little of your church enthusiasm to help solve this. Damn it, everyone, like it or not, we're a family. A family, people! <laughs> 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 Dr. Cox exits the room. You know we love each other. Love's all we got! <laughs> Gary Busey, who's doing this, dressed as a doctor. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Gary, Busey, extra time yes. that <laughs> Gary Busey then exits past a distracted Turk who barely looks up. See And Dr. Cox exit. Go uh, to JD. Okay, it's your turn. Give her the old bald faced lie with a specific detail that will cover your tracks when you don't show. Carla, I'll be there because it means a lot to you. But I might be a smidge late because I'm meeting my uncle's contractor to design a new gazebo that I'm gifting to the summer camp I went to as a child. <laughs> now put the cherry on the Sunday. Camp Chickamontawala. <laughs> Sitting in the group disperses, Carla calls after them all. This picture's gonna happen. No, it's not. Well, what do you know, Mark John? <laughs> I've predicted a few things over the years. The kitchen fire of 97, the kitchen fire of 98, the arson conviction of Luis the <laughs> <laughs> If 
bottom line, that picture's not happening. We revealed Turk in September. Uh, happening! <laughs> Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, man, I just love that. I'm not coming either. We then go to the ICU later. Dr. Cox's angly sign charts as J.D. walks up. If you're wondering what I thank you for... Else. Oops, that one's actually from my Aunt Judy and her ladies. <laughs>